Alright guys, this is it. So, for those of you guys who might not know, we are uh, a few days away from a patch. I believe that there is meant to be a balance update happening on February the 18th. What that's going to mean for all of us is that we only have a few days left to get to Masters with something uh, fairly busted if we want to do it in that time. So, what I'm going to go ahead and recommend to you guys is if you want to try to get a Masters in the next couple of days before the first balance update, which, by the way, I think it's actually a really good time to get there right now for a few reasons, uh, and, you know, some, some of those being, like, uh, somewhat statistically backed. Uh, basically, this is the deck that I would recommend playing for the next few days before balance changes come down. Now we don't know what balance changes are going to be happening, but I think it's a fair assumption that something in Elusives and something in Shadow Isles Fearsomes is going to get bumped down a notch. And this is effectively the culmination of my Elusive build. It's gone through uh, several different forms in the past three weeks, basically it's adjusting every time the meta adjusts. I'm basically trying to stay ahead of things and make sure I tweak this out as well. And this is kind of like where I've ended up right now for uh, the fearsome heavy meta for my elusive deck. Now, this is a deck that I think does extremely well against the meta in general, as well as fearsomes when you're playing very fast. Now you guys understand, you know, the, the very basics of, you know, elusive and just elusive being, you know, generally, Hmm, I, I don't know if I want to say unfair, but it's a very, very powerful deck that if you have the right cards, the opponent will be able to do basically nothing about it. And this is a version that plays very, very fast and uh, low to the ground effectively to try to burn down the opponent very quickly, right? So to that end, uh, we are going to be running Zed. We're going to be running Standalone that has the ability to, you know, potentially hit Zed, potentially hit some other like value targets, any elusive is going to be good for it. Uh, you can use it with Lifeblade as well. We're running two Relentless Pursuits. Those are, you know, very, very, very fast, aggressive cards that will basically underperform in the mirror, which is why in an earlier iteration of the deck, I had them in an earlier version of the deck like two, two weeks ago, which was like four versions ago. And now Pursuit is back in because right now it's a lot better in the meta than it was uh, two weeks ago. Um, as well as a new addition, which is Bright Steel Protector, which is going to do very, very well against Fearsomes, especially when you drop it early. You know, it's great with Fleet Feather Tracker, just sending it into something for free. But also when you drop it in the early game, it does an amazing job of fending off Fearsomes. It can often stop an entire attack, very comparable to Ice Veil Archer, which you guys probably know I've liked in the past. To top it all off, we've added Navori Blade Scout to help our early game. So let's explain what this version of Elusives is doing as opposed to other versions. This is a very, very aggressive version. We run cards like Relentless Pursuit that pay off basically zero in the mirror match. Um, and also cards that are going to not be getting long-term value in the mirror as well, like Blade Scout and Strike. So effectively, this version, very, very important to understand this, is going to lose win rate points in the Elusive Mirror to boost win rate points in the Fearsome matchup. Now, this is something that I would not have recommended doing like a week and a half ago when there were a lot more Elusives, but right now, there are a good amount of Fearsomes going uh, on ladder, and it's a great time to prey on them with a tailored version of Elusives that are going to, you know, do very well against them, as well as the rest of the field. The only slight weakness is the full-on elusive mirror. So, let's go ahead and look at some data. Uh, for those of you guys who want to see it, this is the Mobilytics data dump for, uh, as of right now, uh, February 14th. This should be yesterday if you're watching this. Um, but I'm recording on the 14th, and basically, just to break down real quick what this represents, these are Masters uh, matches in the last several days, and this is of course recorded by anyone using, you know, the tracker. You can't record every single game right now, um, but this is anyone using the Mobilitex tracker. So, obviously, this is going to be sorted by games played. At the top, you can see this is the Ionian Shadow Isles Hecarim Elise deck with a win rate of 60%. 
Um, and right under it, the games played going to 3000 is this deck. This is Elusives. Now, you'll see this version without Zed, and I did add Zed back in recently to help the mirror matchup. But as we can see, if you're, you know, if, if you like data, there's a bit of a bump up here in terms of win rate percentage, which isn't surprising at all because I've been basically saying that Elusives is going to be a very, very powerful deck to play for a while. And honestly, Fearsome is definitely a bit overrepresented on ladder right now. It's very possible to build uh, decks like Elusives that are kind of teched in such a specific way that are going to be able to generate a really high win rate against them. And as you can see, like 61% is pretty much the highest win rate you get until you go all the way uh, down. Oh, it's right here, which is the Heimerdinger deck. You, you got like 800 games played, so this loses like a lot of statistical significance. But yeah, Heimerdinger is a solid choice as well. So, basically, as we can see, you know, this is a top choice right now for the meta. Uh, Elusives is something that I can definitely, definitely recommend to you guys. Uh, for those of you guys uh, who might want uh, access to these kinds of data points, this is going to be something I think that Mobilytics is going to be making uh, an article or a post about this uh, coming soon, but I can't necessarily say for sure, um, but yeah, right now it's in a process, you know, I've, I've showed something off like that before, and of course, we're getting closer and closer to having like very, very significant data, because before we didn't have masters only games. All right. So back to the deck, as we can see, uh, I, I guess I should add in like real quick before I go to the games, why I added Zed back in. So Zed is a card that doesn't really fit the initial concept of the list, which is effectively to deny value out of the opponent's chump blockers. But effectively, Zed is really great in a fearsome dominated meta because fearsomes, because of their extremely high play rate and fairly well, quite high win rate, they kind of force people to run um, no chump blockers, right? They force people to have like a very, very specific counters to fearsome, and they added like a ton of devaluing to any like 1-1 one, one blockers that are there, right? Zed happens to help like the standalone game plan right now. He's solid in like a more aggressive style on the list, works with like Relentless Pursuit as well. So he's definitely a slottable option. You don't have to craft the third Zed if you don't have it. Um, but right now in this new meta, I actually like slotting him back into the deck, even though I was one of the first ones who cut him out like two two weeks ago, and you guys might be saying, "Swim, so you're saying Zed was like too bad, bad, or sorry, you're saying Zed was bad two weeks ago." And yeah, I mean it's a different meta at this point, but yeah, Zed ends up finding his way back into the list. All right, and that is the updates to Elusive List. Now I'm gonna take this to ladder and show you guys. Uh, let's do two games of this because these are gonna be quick, uh, just to show you guys how the deck works. All right, so as you can see, we are currently 56 on ladder. I think that was also shown at the start of the video, uh, and I'm doing that so you guys know I'm not cherry-picking these games. This is just the first ladder game that I just queued up with. I'm not trying to, like, misrepresent anything. You know, if we hit, like, a bad draw and we lose, that's fine. Let's go ahead and get into our game here. We are against a PNZ version of Shadow Isles. Now this is kind of like a deck that's been going around for a little bit using like PNZ Splash instead of Ionia. Honestly, I'm fine with it. Typically these are gonna be running Static Shocks. I've seen some with like Get Excited as well. So uh, this is a matchup. It, it's pretty normal to Shadow Isles, right? Like it's it's not really like very different from normal Shadow Isles gameplay. Just using a couple of different cards from the second faction. So here we've got uh, Life Blade on four, back to back. Back to back is a little bit uh, early here. We've got three of them, and we're on pretty good odds of getting it later. We've got Zed as well, which is going to be solid. We are attacking on odds, which is a really, really big deal for the mulligan. And I think I'll kick the Life Blade due to us, you know, attacking on odds as well. It's a lot less good on odds attacks. And I really want, like, early game stability. Like, when you only have Zed as the opener, first of all, Zed bumps your outs like crazy. Because Zed makes, you know, when you have the Zed in the mulligan, you've got the hit of, you know, standalone, inspiring mentor. Uh, pretty much like any like high power like support card that's gonna help out which is really really important to find for so he's sort of like just because his presence is there and we're attacking on three he's gonna be effectively like passively incending incentivizing us to mulligan a bit deeper as well as like the life blade it has a hard time being kept because I really want to make sure I've got like an early like one mana play or two mana play so we can go ahead and chill here this looks great I don't think there's anything fancy to do at all. The one consideration is maybe like not blocking the spider in case we're about to draw a conspirator. But I don't think that's going to be worth it here. Let's go ahead and get the spider out of the picture. 
Okay, so we're gonna be going to next turn uh, with the 4-3 Zed Quick Attack. Now he's got a few answers to this. These are going to be uh, typically Mark of the Isles or Black Spear are the two ways he can answer this. And of course, Radiant Strike could in theory help against both depending on what he chooses to develop here. So there's a Skitterer, not super unexpected. He's closed out his mana for Black Spear, leaving Mark as the only option. Unfortunately, there's not a lot we can do about Mark, so we're gonna go ahead and attack. If he does take a block, that means he probably will have Mark. There it is. And that's fine. One of the things about combat tricks that's really important is like, you can't really be afraid of them. It's like, the reason why Mark is so good is because you can't really, like, just assume they don't have it. It's like, you do have to attack, and when they have it, they will swing for value. And at one mana, you're very, very priced in for that value. So we hit the standalone, which is a pretty good turn for it. Now we will be able to get it on life blade. Pretty standard stuff here, nothing, uh, nothing crazy so far. This one will involve some amount of tanking. Um, I mean, we can go ahead and eat this little spider. And that's it. Now, if the opponent didn't have zero mana and, you know, Mark wasn't, you know, if Mark was an option, I probably wouldn't take a block like this, but here is a freebie. Okay. And you guys know this, this isn't really anything new, this isn't really anything novel, but right now this is a way that I would recommend playing the game. Elusives plus buff elusives. Wow. What a, <laughs> what a lot of value we've got there. So we've got our casual 5-5. Five five. We're potentially threatening. Uh, we're, we're very close to threatening lethal right now, by the way. I want to point that out. If we play Blade Scout into Relentless Pursuit, we have a total of 14 unblockable damage on the board. Um, that being said, we aren't at that amount quite yet. So I think it's fine to just take a uh, fairly... Yeah, yeah. There's, there's not really anything at slow speed that's going to hurt us. Let's, let's take the Blade Scout. I'm just thinking of all the things to play around here. Like I said, some of these decks are on Static Shock. Um, I mean, that's usually the reason you're in PNZ here. So, I'll take this attack right now. If we had, like, one more mana, the game would literally be over. We'd have uh, Relentless Pursuit off of, like, the blade, the second Blade Scout or something like that. Now, we could take the Relentless Pursuit right now. Basically, just take a full heal. Um, you don't really mind doing that. Like, the fact that it heals you off of the Life Blade is pretty important. And at 3 mana, he has a pretty hard time, like, stopping you for value here. I think that this is probably fine to do. Um, it's going to be really, really hard to get more value than this out of it. And we're just threatening to kill next turn anyway. Mostly, this kind of just plays a bit safe around the weird lose condition of, like, him doing something strange. Like, this deck can ass pull a crazy amount of damage real fast. I want to be at 20 health, and the fact that he's at 2, I have, like, you know, the big flyer on the board, plus, you know, the backup second blades got on hand, plus Radiant Strike. I'm not really worried about my ability to, like, you know, whiff the reach here. Mostly, I'm pretty concerned about my ability to stay alive against some pretty, pretty strange stuff can happen, you know. I mean, this is a very, very spooky deck, and sometimes, like I said, they could just ass pull a crazy amount, right? Like, 20 is not even really safe. No one's safe. Okay, we're going all the way down to one. If we go ahead and skip and let this through, we will end up at one health. Um, and there's not really major punishes to that. One punish is, of course, the Static Shock, and there's the Deny there to counter it. Now, one problem with that, of course, is that, you know, the Deny... If he has, like, Static Shock plus Static Shock or Static Shock plus Get Excited, then we're actually dead if we don't block this at all. So we might have to take a block that looks kind of like this. In this case, by committing this block, we are letting him use uh, Mark of the Isles, which I think is, or, yeah, Mark of the Isles, which I, I think is probably fine. I think that is actually, in this case, necessary, um, because there's not really a lot else. Uh, this is basically just the best way to, like, play around multiple lose conditions. Um, I think this is also a pretty safe block as well. It just stops a lot of, like, some of the weirdest stuff from happening. And we still have Radiant if he wants to try to kill this with Mark, which he has to here. So that's, like, second Mark or Glimpse. There's the Glimpse. And at one mana left, I think we can pretty safely just deny that out. 
Okay, so this is really how the deck works. It's like you just go very, very, very fast, very, very, very in. You've got like, you know, good pressure tools, just one big buff, and you're just closing the game out, right? Like I say, this is nothing new. It's elusives, you guys know elusives, but it's a deck that's gone through a lot of different versions, and this is kind of the version that I end up recommending for kind of the latter as it is right now. As you can see, this this tends to do very well against fearsomes. There's Purify. So we can go in with Blade Scout. Blade Scout's gonna be kind of important here if he has something weird like get excited or vengeance because we you know forced our own deny it means we will need the second option here and he's gonna go ahead and fold out okay so that's game number one um again this is a very aggressive version of elusives and the reason that this does poorly in the mirror match against normal elusive decks is because cards like relentless pursuit just end up being kind of full bricks and on top of that because uh you know ten tends to be that when you have a, a mirror concept and you guys can watch you know if you haven't seen already my um you know playing fast versus playing slow video it's the same exact concept you really want to make sure you are you know playing a little bit slower than the opponent or a lot faster in the mirror because you're the same general concept the slower player tends to win so this deck has a hard time in the mirror match against normal elusives but pretty much dumpsters, fearsomes, and actually a lot of other decks along with it. Let's just go ahead and jump into the second game here. Again, I'm not going to edit this out. Like, sometimes we're going to draw bad. That's fine. We're just going to show off the deck. Okay, so here is... Uh, second opener, we've got Zed standalone. We're attacking on evens this time, so we don't have, you know, the big Zed standalone on the turn we want. We've got Tracker on turn one into Duo on turn two on the even attack, which is not bad. And he's a control matchup, so we are going to want to apply some real early pressure here. I actually think this is a full keep. Um, I quite like this hand. This is pretty sweet. So we'll, we'll find a way to get standalone value. You don't have to be, like, super paranoid about this, I think. Um, mostly, it's really important. Because we're not attacking on three, like, I do want to develop some, you know, some pressure tools. He's a slow deck, right? Like I say, you want to play a lot faster or a lot faster than your opponent or a little slower because he's a very slow deck. He's got slow cards like Karma, Anivia. These are cards that are going to get really like late game long term value. We want to go very fast because our deck can't slow down enough to be slower than him. So we want to go as fast as possible. In this case, that's going to be developing four damage worth into his Nexus on turn two. And it's really, really important to get this like aggressive tempo early now we do have the standalone in hand which looks a little awkward doesn't it but it's pretty rare for this to not hit for value like even if he doesn't kill either of my units i'll still be able to send the tracker into something right there will be a chance to use standalone he will be killing off my units it's gonna be fine see this is interesting so there's river shaper and he doesn't have his own standalone in that deck wow hmm i don't typically tend to see river shaper being ran in this list that's very interesting. So I think I'll I'll go ahead and pass here. We'll see what he does. I don't mind sending it to spell mana. Um, and I th think I'll just take this block as well. I mean, usually he'll have some kind of spell to protect this. And I think that's okay. Like maybe Elixir of Iron, Brittle Steel. Usually there's something coming down here. Flash Freeze, sure. So we've got the standalone if we want it, if we want to just like start applying some pressure. And standalone is going to be our pressure tool of choice. So that's going to take this up to five. He's only at four mana, so the threat there is like Will of Ionia pretty much. I definitely want to get a lot of early aggression, so that looks like Mentor plus Zed after the standalone, right? Obviously we have seven mana to use here. So uh, we're worried about Will, we want to develop like multiple uh, amounts of value. Uh, we're worried about like avalanche mentor keeps Zed out of avalanche so let's go for the standalone mentor Zed, right it's all about early pressure life blade's no good here because i mean we don't we we don't want a life steal we want to kill him very very quickly and we need you know ways of doing that so 
it's gonna be up to him what he wants to do. At four mana, he actually doesn't have a ton of options. Usually a deck like this would be in mana reserve at this point. This flash freeze cost him quite a bit. Three mana for what it did on that turn. He's quite a bit behind. Normally that would, in, in most draws, be like a brittle steal and he would actually have that mana floating, like he'd have options here. But suddenly we actually have like a pretty dominant board state. At one mana, there's not a lot he can do. Um, this is like pretty forced out. I think the Mentor is actually a totally solid attack target here. The Green Glade is threatening a basically inevitable 8 damage, right? Which is pretty crazy. Um, and yeah, he'll just block the Mentor out with Wolf. So, uh, this is outside of Brittle Steel range, of course, being at 4 health as well. So it looks pretty good. We've got kind of the early aggression we want. Now he has a couple ways to heal. This kind of deck usually will run Catalyst, but at this point of the game, 5 mana for that 3 Nexus health is just going to be too slow, I think. Um, he is going to need ways to start removing these. And right now I've developed uh, kind of multiple threats such that, you know, Will is going to be a little awkward. Now I could use Radiant Strike to potentially keep my Zed alive. That's actually a tough one. Wow. If I take the Radiant Strike, it's actually very easy for him to counter with like a second Flash Freeze. We're outside of Brittle Steel range. I know he's on tricks. He might have to Harsh Winds and at 6 mana, it just wouldn't be worth it for him to take that Harsh Winds. Radiant Strike is such a value tool later, and the odds of him sitting on some kind of, like, re-swing trick is really, really high. Whew. I think the, the simple fact that he's already used one Flash Freeze and this puts me out of Brittle Steel range, I think makes this worth it. I think so, I like this. Like, normally, like, if, if I was still at 3 health after doing that, I'd never do it. Brittle Steel slaps me way too hard. If he hadn't used the first Flash Freeze, I, I still might I still might do that. That would be a bit closer. But here it's like he's at six mana, so he could harsh winds, kill the Zed, keep the dog alive. But then he's committed his entire mana pool in a valuable survival tool. Now he's on the harsh winds here. He almost certainly has one in hand. Like he's got the eight card hand, and he's you know playing like in, in a very like limited range. Like there's not a ton. There's not a ton of like crazy different hands he could have here. I think. But man, that would feel bad to have to Harsh Winds here. That would feel really, really bad. So he actually does have second Flash Freeze, okay. Yep. And that's fairly fine. We're still trading up mana-wise, and mana is, you know, the early game resource. We want to play for the early game, so it would only make sense that respecting the early game resource is the biggest part of that. Now, we really got to be worried about Harsh Winds. That's going to be delaying us for uh, potentially a few turns in a row here. Let's go ahead and open with Tracker and just kind of see what happens. So he's not floating this mana, that's pretty interesting. Back to back is a bit of a nut draw. And we have it off of the Life Blade as well. I think if I play the Life Blade now, he'll be forced into a float for Harsh Winds. And we'll just take him down. So usually he passes back to us here. <clears throat> One of the, a very common misconception in this game, I think, is that against control as the aggressor, you want to open attack. And that's, I think, completely backwards. It's quite the opposite. Control, the matchup is the one that has, like, they've got the fast speed spells. They're the ones that want you to not have your mana early on, right? Like, he's, he's reliant on these fast speed spells to really get anywhere, right? He's reliant on this harsh winds to keep him alive. So he's the one who's basically in a situation where he has to wait and we get to develop. There's the harsh winds, here's the back to back. Now he needs exactly brittle steel to stay alive. And of course it's too late because back to back will buff the health amounts just enough and that's a fold. So those are the two games with this deck. Um, they're very fast games. You'll climb quickly with this deck. Now, this is a, you know, don't get me wrong, it's a meta deck. I feel dirty playing this all, I just played for like 20 minutes. That wasn't even 20 minutes, I, I won those two games, that was like, that was 12 minutes. I feel dirty, okay? It's a meta deck, you're not gonna feel clean playing this deck, you know? I mean, it's, it's less popular than Fearsome, which is strange to me, because it is, you know, tends to be a bit better, um... But it's it's around the same. It's it, it, it's on a similar power level. For some reason, it's very underrepresented on ladder, despite being a very very powerful list. Okay, 
So again, you know, as always, I would recommend this deck. I forgot to say this early on in the video, but there's a link in the... <laughs> I linked the video, uh, the, the deck link <laughs> in the pinned comments. Hopefully, hopefully you didn't have to sit through this entire video just to just to find the deck link. I'm sure I'm sure you guys scrolled down to the pinned comments and found it already. A more professional YouTuber would have said that like 30 minutes ago. Anyway, that's going to be it for me, guys. That is the deck that you have three days, three days with this deck to hit masters if you're in like diamond or high plat or something. Now is your chance. Get it in early before this shit gets nerfed. I'm not joking. <laughs> it's a good time.